The Papillon foot trim is an integral part of their groom. When trimming feet, I use thinners, straights, a small slicker brush, clippers, and a Dremel. I start by doing prep work, which includes shaving pads and Dremeling nails. It's important when doing feet, especially front feet, to gather up as much feathers in your hand as possible so you don't shave them or get them caught in your Dremel. Then, with my Wald Reveras set on the 40 blade, I shave out his pads, splaying his toes so that I don't catch his skin in between. When shaving pads, I use the 40 blade setting to get them as short as possible. If you're uncomfortable or apprehensive about using this short of a blade, anywhere from a 10 to a 30 will also clean them out. After I have his pad shaved out, I go to Dremel his nail and round it out. Pushing each toe out slightly away from the rest of the foot, I round out each nail by keeping my right thumb over my left and pivoting my Dremel around each edge of the nail in a circular fashion. When lifting up each foot, I like to slide my hand down their leg as to prepare the dog that I'm going to pick up a foot. Additionally, I also like to get pads and nails done at the same time so that I don't have to pick up their feet more than necessary. Some dogs like Fritz prefer when I do their front nails out in front of them instead of me pulling their feet slightly behind them. When trimming and shaping Papillon feet, you should always have the breed standard in mind. Each breed of dog will have vastly different looking feet to match their breed's original function. Your Papillon's feet should look like the hairy feet of a Cavalier or the clean shaven feet of a Poodle. The breed standard calls for hair feet. Your dog's foot structure should already reflect this, but the hair on top will usually overgrow and need to be trimmed to accentuate what their foot structure actually looks like. To do this, I take a small slicker brush and brush the top of the hair on the foot upwards. Then I take a pair of thinning shears and trim back their hair, keeping the shears parallel with the foot and moving slowly from one toe to the last.
If your dog becomes uncomfortable, let them readjust as necessary. Foot trimming can be very unnerving for many dogs and they need to be conditioned to it. Making sure they are as comfortable as possible is important. When all the hair on top is neatly thinned, I grab my straight shears and I begin trimming the sides of the foot. The sides of the foot should join at the tip into the point like a triangle. Setting the foot on the table will help show you where you need to trim in order to accentuate correct structure. You will also want to pick up the foot and pull the hair between the toes so that you can snip it off for sanitary purposes. Dogs with extra thick or long arm feathers can cause problems such as the dog stepping on them or tracking debris. I trim them back slightly to the first digit so that there is less of a chance of this happening. I like looking at the difference between a finished and unfinished foot so I can tell if my feet are holding shape or not. If a foot has not held shape, it will be longer or shorter in one region or another, which tells me I need to focus on that area more. If a foot has held shape after growing out, then I don't worry too much. When I trim a dog's socks, I start by snipping off the excess around the bottom of their pad. Then I brush all the hair on their hock upwards towards their butt. Depending on the dog, I may just shape their hocks in a certain direction to accentuate their structure or trim them with my straight shears to get the bulk off and then go back to my thinners to soften the look. 